I'm Sean Reardon. I'm a professor of poverty and inequality in education at the Stanford Graduate School of Education. Our goal was to figure out how academic performance has changed uh, from 2019 to now. We wanted to see what's the impact of the COVID pandemic been on kids' educational outcomes. The strategy is to compare students' test scores in 2019 to test scores of students in 2022 who are the same age and grade. So NAEP, or the nation's report card, is, is different than what we did. NAEP measures the average performance of students in each state, but we wanted to go deeper in, and we wanted to look at the average performance and changes in performance in each school district. So we wanted a more local level, and so for that we needed to use the tests administered by each state that every student takes in every school district. So students in different states take different tests. The tests aren't the same in South Carolina as they are in South Dakota. But what we're able to do is equate those tests to a common scale so that we can compare the changes in performance that students experienced in South Carolina to those of students in school districts in South Dakota. That lets us make an apples to apple comparison to see where in the country, which school districts had the largest declines in student performance and which ones had the smallest. Test scores in 2022 were much lower than they were in 2019. Uh, on average, about a third of a grade level to a half of a grade level lower, depending on you're, whether you're looking at math or reading. Not only were the learning losses large on average, but they were enormously variable. There are a few patterns to the variabilities. The first thing we found is that students' test performance went down a lot more in high poverty school districts than in low poverty districts. So students in the most disadvantaged communities had their academic opportunities and test scores declined the most during the pandemic. Another thing we found is that test scores declined more on average in school districts that where students were learning remotely than in school districts where students were in person. But that's not the only thing that mattered. Um, in fact, the extent to which a school district was in person or remote explains only a small bit of the variation across school districts. And that is because schools weren't the only thing that were affecting kids' educational opportunities and their test scores. Kids' families were disrupted, their parents lost their jobs, they may have had family members who were sick or died. Uh, the, the mental health impact of the pandemic on children was substantial. They were cut off in many cases from their friends and social networks. They were experiencing a kind of unheard of disruption in society as children, and that's somewhat bewildering. So a lot of things were happening that made it hard for kids to learn. One of them seems to be the extent to which schools were open or closed, but that's only one among many factors that seems to have driven the patterns of change. One of the advantages of having data on lots and lots of school districts is that it can help policymakers and educators figure out how to best target resources and supports to make sure that the students who fell behind the most during the pandemic have the supports they need to ultimately catch up. School districts are sort of the first line of of action to help children catch up. And the better they know about the patterns of learning loss, the more they're gonna be able to target their resources effectively. The pandemic clearly exacerbated educational inequality, but it didn't create it. Educational inequality and inequality of opportunity was quite large even before the pandemic. And so while it's important to sort of think about how do we undo the damage done by the pandemic, it's not enough, I think, to go back to just the state where we were before. What we really need to do is to try to make sustained efforts to dramatically reduce educational inequality of opportunity in this country so that not, not just that it looks like 2019 did, but it, it looks much, much better than that. And that's gonna take sustained efforts, not just th through schools, but also thinking about how to provide more economic resources and improve communities and have families better positioned to be able to help their children succeed.